everyone, it's Lynn here for Superimposed X and welcome back to our masking tutorial. In this part, we're going to go through all the 16 different masking tools and show you how each one works. Every masking tool is different and which one you should use is all about what works best for a particular project and which one you prefer. I'm going to select this landscape picture as the background layer. And then I'm going to add another layer and select this airplane wing. I'm going to crop it to remove some of the sky and then go into a transform to place it where I want it. The goal here is to remove the background around the airplane wing so that it looks like the airplane is flying over the screen landscape instead. So let's go to the mask tab to check out the different tools. There are two ways that you can select a masking tool. You can either tap mask tool and then all the different ones will appear. Or you can tap settings and choose a masking tool from here. Here you can also adjust the brush settings. The first tool we're going to look at is the magic lasso. With this one, you paint along the edges of the object that you want to mask out. Once you're done, tap the check button and it will detect the exact edges and remove the background for you. Next, we have the magic wand. Using the magic wand, you can mask all the similar colored pixels surrounding the point where you touch. This is useful if you want to remove a simple background like a solid color, for example. Just tap and hold on the area that you want to remove and slightly move your finger to adjust the amount. In settings, you can adjust the threshold to control how much variation in color the tool should consider to be the same color. The mask edge mode provides three options. Hard, where the mask edges remain hard. Smooth, where the edges are smoothed out. And feathered, where the masking strength is proportional to the similarity of the masked pixel's color to the color of the pixel that you clicked. The magic wand isn't the best option for this particular image because the background is a very similar color to the object that we want to mask out, and this leads to the mask removing parts of the image that we wanted to keep. The brush tool is exactly what it sounds like, a brush. It doesn't have any fancy effects, it's just a regular brush that lets you paint over the parts of the image that you want to remove. The smart brush is similar to the brush, but it can recognize the edges of the area that you're masking, so if you make any mistakes, it will fix them for you as you go. Next is color range. It's similar to the magic wand, but instead of selecting only the connected pixels, it selects all the pixels in the photo that match the color of the pixel that you touch. Since the color of the background is so similar to the color of the airplane, we have the same issue with this tool as we did with the magic wand tool, but if the background stands out a lot from the object that you want to mask out, it's a really nice and effective tool to use. The lasso is a freehand drawing tool where you draw along the edges of the object that you want to mask out. In settings, you can select if you want the area that you draw to be removed or if you want everything else except for the area that you draw to be removed. And you can also adjust the amount of smoothness of the lasso mask's edge. The polygon tool lets you tap along the edges of the object to create masking points. Once you've gone around the whole object and connected the points, you can tap the check button to mask out the background. And just like with the lasso, you can adjust the smoothness of the edges and choose if you want the mask area to be inside or outside your selection. The rectangle tool lets you mask out a rectangular area. Once you're done, click the check button to accept the mask. And again, you can adjust the smoothness of the mask edge and also the corner radius in settings. Then we have ellipse, which works the exact same way as the rectangle tool, except that you can mask out round shapes instead. With linear gradient, you can drag and draw a line, and this tool will create a gradient as a mask for you. Once you're happy, tap the check button to accept the mask. The bilinear gradient works the same way as the linear gradient, but instead of creating one line, you have two different lines that you can adjust and the mask will be created in between these two lines. Radial gradient works the same way as the previous gradient tools, but the gradient that you create is instead circular. 
With the image tool, you can create a mask from an image from your photo library. So just select a photo and it will automatically create a mask. You can adjust the contrast and brightness as needed and also invert the mask. You can also create a mask from text. Just enter the text you want and choose a font. You also have the option of inverting the mask. The Mask from Shape tool lets you create a mask using a bunch of different shapes. And you can again invert the mask if you want. Lastly, we have Refine Hair. And to show you how this one works, I'm going to load a picture with hair in it. Masking out hair can be tricky since there are so many small little hairs, so this tool is specifically made to help you out with those areas. First, remove the background with any masking tool of your choice. Then choose Refine Hair and paint over the area where the mask for the hair should be refined. And then once you're done, press the check button and it will smooth out the area and make the mask look more natural. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out our other tutorials for Superimposed X. And if you have any questions at all, you're always welcome to send us an email through the Contact Us option inside the app so that we can help you out from there. Bye!